still one of the greatest intros to ever hit the airwaves. Thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world and the family and friends of DMX. This is the Bama Standard. I'm your host, Over the Hill Powerlifter and Bama grad, Justin Riley. With me as always is a living legend, all SEC linebacker and two-time author, Mr. Marvin Constance. But we're not done there. We got the senior analyst of Touchdown Alabama Magazine, who keeps Paul Feinbaum employed these days, Mr. Stephen M. Smith. And then 45 minutes after the hour, we'll be joined by comedy legend Steve Brown. Welcome to the show, fellas. Welcome, welcome. It's a pleasure as always. A-Day Week. Let's go. <clears throat> Man, and to welcome us into A-Day Week, we got a three-time All-SEC offensive lineman, All-American, former New England Patriot and San Diego, then San Diego Charger, Mr. Wesley Britt. Welcome in, sir. Hey, 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 hold on now. You got to get this right. Beer game Britt. <laughs> yeah, baby. Game. <laughs> yes, sir. We are talking about it. If you're yeah. going to do it, do it, right? He looked like he ready for one of those uh, Just For Men commercials. You know, they do the comb out. <laughs> most people tell me I'm, I'm ready for a lumberjack competition, so I like that. Uh, Duck Dynasty? Tacky. You got the Duck Dynasty look going over there? I see. Uh, hey, I wish I had from... that, that uh, Duck Dynasty money. <laughs> yeah, no, no right. <laughs> be a tag team partner for Braun Strowman in the WWE, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, Marvin, we were talking about earlier, I think he uh, surpassed Atlas's uh, beer game. What do you think? I think they're both in the ballpark together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Atlas has always had a strong beard. He's, his beard game has been going on for years. So, I, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take me a little while to get to that point. But that's a yes, high he, compliment. I no just doubt. keep mine low. No need to grow. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not I, I don't, here to I don't I don't I'm want my about, keys to get lost in my beard like like Mr. Britt here. So I'm sure he's lost <laughs> items. You know, it's great because I can hide snacks in there. So, you know, you go to a meeting and pull out. I hey, like that, man. I like hey, that. I promise you, you got half a bag of Starbucks in there. No, you better believe it. You better, Skittles are the best. Well, I mean, they're well, easy. Steven, Steven, we know you're not hiding nothing in that beard of yours. Can we even call that a beard? What is Look, that? Man, <laughs> hey, it's a scruff, all right? It's a scruff, all right? That's what it is. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> Move on. Yes, like, it goes. <laughs> it looks like you just took some electric tape and just threw it on your chin, man. What is yeah. that? <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I had to look. You got to turn up the lights. Is that shadow? <laughs> <laughs> that's not even a five o'clock shadow. That's more, like, that's more like a high noon. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm done. I'll leave you alone. I'm done. Hey, man, keep the energy going. <laughs> keep yeah. the energy going because right now it's time to jump into our favorite segment. Or one of them, Constance Chaos, where we talk about the crazy things going on in the world of Alabama or, or all over. But it's according to what, how Marvin tonight for us. Good. Must be good. I don't know where to begin. This has nothing to do with Alabama, it has nothing to do with football, it has nothing to do with the male species at all. Why in the hell? Or women so damn crazy the week of their damn <laughs> wedding. Keep in mind, we are recording. You're going to get in trouble. Yeah. She doesn't watch Stop. the show either. Let's, so let's make this out. a 30 second segment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're going to pause our parts and just let you, you know. <laughs> she, she, hey, she can probably hear me. I don't. Listen, why are women so damn crazy the week of wit? I like, it's like, it's like I get the blame for everything. Like, I wasn't even here. What do you mean it's my fault? <laughs> <laughs> right, can, maybe y'all can answer that for me. Mr. Britt, you've been married for a while, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'd like to keep it that way. So. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to pull you down to where he's at, man. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, you know how, you know, Marvin, you lay, we laid in bed growing up every night and thought about, and thought about football. You know, we want exactly. to play at Alabama. We want to, you right. know, that That's first it. day of spring training, we're ready to go. Everything, all that energy, that first game, man, you lose 15 pounds when you're out there because you're, you're giving it everything. You know, and, and a lot of women, 
they 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 dreamed about it and they and they have a mental image of how this is supposed to go and whenever we don't do how we're supposed to do mm, brother watch out why <laughs> why is there going to be three different camera crews and film guys there wait, not, wait. not three not three individuals three different crews look, 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 wait look, are, look, are you look, live look, streaming look, look, on ESPN3 that's what no, I'm wondering. Yeah, no, 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 Mar see, see Mar 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 see, see, the answer to this is, for a lot of women, they like to see themselves from different angles, right? So the first camera crew going to get the front side. The second mm -hmm. camera crew going to get the other side. And the third crew going to get our back side. Like, yeah. they want three uh, different see, angles. See, see, but you're missing out. There's a whole drone crew, too. Getting shots from above. Like, they will, hey, look, look, <laughs> they, look, look, one thing, Marvin. Women are over the top. They are over the top. Wait, hold on, hold on. Does that drone not scare you a little bit? That that thing's flying <laughs> over you the whole time you're trying to say your knuckles? At this point, he won't even know. I'd be scared. I'd be <laughs> scared to death. At this point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just ready for it to be. Oh, yeah, I'm looking around the corner. She's, she's upstairs watching live, man. Brad. She's upstairs watching live, man. Be careful. Well, the downside to it is if I get put out, I got multiple guest rooms to choose from. Mm. So that's right. Won't be on the couch. Hey, just, just say yes, ma'am. It's worth it. It's worth it. After that first couple of years, marriage is a great thing. But here's you work thing. At But why is this week so mm. I don't even have a word for it. It's like, come on, I just want it over with at this point. Like, come on, man. Like just, yeah, we just want just want to be married. So what what was what was uh worse going through spring training or going through this? Hell this <laughs> <laughs> In spring training, I was the enforcer. I pretty much did what oh, I wanted to right, do. See, 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 in spring training, you can mentally clock in and clock out. Well, no, see, but during spring training, it's like, okay, this is what I've done my whole life. This is like walking with my eyes closed. I can just do this with ease. Let's just go do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like this whole marriage, wedding thing. Like, and I, I had to tell, I was like, well, you know, I didn't grow up dreaming about weddings, right? You know, I pretty much was a man's man and just grew up. You know, playing football and doing manly things, right? You know, it's like no parts of me ever dreamed about weddings. Mm -hmm. so I don't really know. You know, I'm just along for the ride at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so long for the ride. You know, you were picking out arrangements, man. Don't even lie. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I think we better so what, change. So, the what stuff. color flowers are you going with? Lilies yeah, or hydrangeas or what are you thinking? <laughs> I, just, I just gave her. I just gave her the money. I was making sure she ain't around the corner. <laughs> Man, Marvin, before I think you dig a hole any deeper, I think we better move on to some football talk. Please, <laughs> please, 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 please. Man, uh, well, before the show, you know, the hottest topic being discussed right now is uh, spring training. Previously is pro day. We'll get to that later. You know, with all the focus on spring practice and a day this weekend, Wes, from your perspective, what did this time of year mean to you? You know, I think it's – you want to see the defense come out. I mean, defense is always ahead of the offense, making tackles, making plays at this time of year. So we need to see our defense come out strong. We want some leaders. Hold on, on Wesley. Defense. Hold on. Hold on, Wesley. Let me interrupt you real quick. While you're talking about defense, what are your thoughts on Pete Golding? <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> we changed channels, Wes, but we didn't change concepts, man. It's still, it's still in our brain. But I so, mean, do you think he's up the task of making the defense better? Hell, I, they, they won a national championship. You know, with the what, offense. The offense. We I had mean, to shoot had, out Florida. We, we had to shoot out Ole Miss. Player at every position. Besides tight end in the whole country, which is unbelievable, but but we did win a national championship, and and Saban likes Pete. I mean, he seems to he seems to really like him. I don't know if this is recruiting or what, but 
Uh, I think people might be scratching there's some, the there's back some in his office yeah. after all this come on. Give, give us a little well, hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, Marvin. Are you saying that I ain't saying nothing? I said that under my breath, man. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm Marvin. Just try, excuse, I'm just trying to be show, Marvin. Hey, don't try to get me banned from the complex, man. Don't do that. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, 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 I ain't trying to. So you can get banned from the you can get banned from the wedding and the complex all in one show, man. You you're doing very well. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, that, but the defense needs to come out strong, right? I, I agree with that. I agree with and, that. And if they don't, that's on Pete. That's on yeah. Pete. If they don't come out strong and shut down the offense, new quarterback, new coaches, new new OC, new offensive line coach, the offense, the new offensive lineman, left tackle. I mean, they've got to uh, – they, they, they should be in a learning mode, uh, still playing physical, come out and being physical, but you want to see the offensive line gaining ground and start to move folks on the, move folks uh, when you're having zone runs but still still having some trouble picking up blitzes. Well, but uh, the, the thing about it, though, you know, for most people who don't understand that concept, when you start talking about spring practice – Offenses rely more on timing, where defenses rely more on read and react. It's a lot easier to read and react to what you see than it is to have proper timing with a quarterback and a receiver on different routes, depending upon what route they're running on the route tree. Linemen, they have to block. That's all about time and getting up to the next level at the right time so that that running back is in the right place. Offense is all time, and defense is really – you see it? Just go tackle it. So yeah. the defense should be ahead of the offense this time of the year, but it goes back to one thing. Are you putting them in the proper position to mm -hmm. read and react, though? Yeah, and Marvin, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said uh, – when you alluded to offensive players being a lot smarter than defensive no, players. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> Steven? <laughs> I mean – I mean, yeah. but go ahead, Marvin. All I heard was Steve? defense, see ball, get ball, and that was it. Meanwhile, yeah. but no, but you're yeah. right. But that's right. The there's a lot of timing aspect of it, and right. getting that timing and figuring out how to play, and figuring out you're you're uh, working with, with under some new systems. You, there'll be a lot of the same terminology. Saban stays pretty consistent there, but but there will be new time. You have new folks coming in, coming in the lineup, and every and they got a gel, and it's a learning, it's a steep learning curve, and that's what they're trying to nail. And and they're you know, I would expect to have some issues, but I want to see them. I want to see the offensive line coming off the ball, gaining ground, zones, pushing people back because they are. Our offensive line is bigger, stronger, and faster than everybody will play. So I know I know this is completely off topic, but have y'all seen this 19 foot, seven ton bronze statue of an elephant? Have y'all seen Tusk? Yes. Tusco, like, man. I, like, yeah. like, I, I'm hoping that Big Al is not jealous right now because he has to share <laughs> the fan base with this bronze statue that's right that's, in front of the stadium. Big seen. Al may be turned on a little bit by this bronze statue. I've seen him put out a couple of tweets. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think you're on something. <laughs> yeah, but but you know when you start talking about spring practice though. One of the things that I enjoy most about spring practice is you get a lot of young guys competing for jobs mm -hmm. because most guys are going to earn their jobs during the spring. Mm -hmm. Going into the summer, you should already know if you're the starter or not so that you're getting adequate reps in seven on sevens and all the other stuff that you do during the summer. So, you know, that's the time when you get to see those young guys actually grow up during the spring. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that I actually look forward to. So Wesley, who's that one young guy that you think is going to truly emerge from that group of offensive linemen that we have? Because again, we know that this is when you start to see a lot of people make those names themselves in the spring. Man, I, th that's a good question. I would have to look through that and do a little bit more research there, but, but we have some five-star offensive linemen that have been waiting in the wings, some we just signed that are on campus, been in spring, and had great spring trends. So I want to see them with effort. That's where I, as a redshirt freshman, as a redshirt freshman in spring camp, with Dennis Franchoni's first year, that's where I earned the starting line. I was on second team all camp. And coming into the, it's, uh, into summer camp, I was on first team because of the level of effort. I, I messed up a lot uh, as far as timing and plays. <laughs> but – but the effort is something you know the coaches can see effort and see that they have the ability to learn to learn the system right. and not have the mental errors 
and they can fix that, but you can't, but you, but you can't coach effort. And so right. that's what I'm going to be looking for. Some of our, some of our young, uh, highly okay. talented office alumni. Okay. Yeah, I so, want to see the two yeah. brothers out of Texas. That's who I'm looking forward to. Seeing. That's him. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now, 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 now I'll, I'll, I'll say this on, on that point. So I think right now, the one freshman that's really starting to kind of make a name for himself is the kid from Florida, J.C. Latham, out of IMG. I mean, that kid is a freak of nature. Now, the mm. Brockemeyer boys from Texas, Tommy Brockemeyer, he's got a lot of ability. He, he's, he's still trying to get that quickness down, but the ability is there. I think James, his brother, is probably a year away. But I look at, I look at the guy that's ready right now of that group of freshmen – I think it's Latham out of Florida. I mean, he's ready right now. Yeah. Well, you got you got to understand something though. A lot of people will never understand what it's like to to line up and have to face a Albert Hainsworth, a Zon Henderson, uh, uh, mm. uh, uh, Alex Brown, a uh, uh, Javon Curse, a uh, Leonard Little. I mean, it mm. was some killers when when we played yeah. in school. You know, so that ain't something you see every day, and especially coming out of high school. Could you imagine coming out of high school and having a line up against Javon Curse? I mean, that ain't really a challenge that I, I don't think a lot of people would would, it, would want any parts. <laughs> he was NFL I, I ready. mean, I mean, I mean, I'm, 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 and like you mentioned, Marvin, I mean, think about how these freshman offensive linemen feel right now at Bama. You have to defend against Will Anderson, and uh, yeah. that's not an easy task right there. I mean, yeah, I'm not saying it's an easy task, but what what I am saying is that, you know, because I said earlier, it's all about timing. Right. So getting up to speed with that timing and catching up to the game, that's often a difficult task for younger linemen because, again, the speed of the game, is it's a lot faster than high school. So, you know, yeah, you, you got to imagine, you know, you the, the learning curve is very fast because nobody cares you're a freshman. You know, nobody cares. Mm-hmm. You know, you're in Alabama. You're here to play, so you you better suit up and get ready. I mean, so you yeah. know, I think it's more mental than anything else. A lot of them it have is. to get past those mental hurdles to just accept the fact that I'm in a position that it's a, it's a dog eat dog world playing at Alabama. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, I remember. You know, that brought back memories of one of my first, our first day of camp, uh, coming a freshman. You know, straight out of high school, and they put me on the board drill against Kenny Smith. And you know, and he's a man. <laughs> you know, I didn't know what to expect. I'd never seen anybody, you know, looks like that in my life. You know, <laughs> you know that he was a, he was a man. And uh, but until you get that first hit under your belt, uh, man, it's a uh, it's it's a mental game that you have to be prepared for, and it's not easy. Not at all. And I don't know how. I'm I'm so impressed about some of the, the freshmen that come in and play. Because I was – my fre- true freshman year, when it, I was backing up both tackles, second team both tackles. And I don't know that I've ever said this to anybody, but a couple of close friends, and especially not on air. Mm-hmm. But if I would have got put in, I wouldn't have had a clue what was going on. I mean, it was <laughs> – <laughs> Okay. I, I would have okay. had a – like, I would have just blocked the person in front of me, and that's all I, I could have done. So- so, Wes, in, in your mind, when did the mental challenge get easier out there? Because, I mean, I mean, I mean you brought it up. It, yeah. it's, you and Mark both brought it up. It, it's, it's a process for a lot of freshmen uh, mentally. So just for you, Wes, when did that get easier? Uh, you know, it, it, it got easier gradually. It was something that you always had to improve on. There was always, no matter how crisp you got, there was always more film to watch and more to learn about the game. But after my mm-hmm. after my redshirt freshman about redshirt freshman after training camp, really is when things started to slow down. Uh, and of course, that was a Dennis Franchoni option. You know, we were just going out and cut blocking everybody. It seemed like, and then this and just being meaner than the other team. And so that was my style. So that made it a lot a lot easier. But uh, but I, I would say I would say you needed a good year. You needed a good year to to actually go through a training camp, go through a go through a spring training, and then have some downtime to actually process things, to kind of think through. Oh, that you know maybe I made that a lot harder than it was. 
Uh, I got to ask you a question about uh, your, your spring trainings are a little bit different because you kind of ex experienced a, a coaching carousel like no other. You had Francione, he decides to go to AM, and then uh, Mike Price comes in for a hot 20 minutes. You know, you nah, man, two seconds for some coffee and a, and a, Guth and a Guthrie's bag, <laughs> and he's out. And you had know, full spring with him, and then Mike Shula comes yeah. in. Man, what was that experience like ha going th through that many transitions and still trying to prepare yourself for what you had to do? You know, uh, I didn't know anything other than that. Uh, that was just the way it was. Uh, you know, it, it didn't it certainly didn't make things easier having four coaches. But but it was just the way it was. And, and you throw a task, you know, that's that, I think that's one thing that the athletes have in life is we know how to face adversity. When things get thrown on us in life, when it gets hard, when, you know, when you're planning the wedding and you're getting all this, you know, we, we know we can handle it. Whatever you throw at us, you know, even if we can't, we know we can handle it. We just do it. We just do what we got to do to get through that. We don't complain. We just, we just keep, keep carrying on. And I think that was just the mentality we had to have. And, and it's one thing we did during, during that. And, 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 and I think also, the consistency that Mal Moore provided through that uh, was just unbelievable. Uh, we, someone that we knew we had there that we could trust, that we looked on, that we knew loved the University of Alabama, represented it, and, and cared about us as people. I think that made it that made it a lot easier. I think we knew we were being taken care of, so we didn't have to worry about that. We could worry about football. That somebody at, in leadership had our best interests at heart, uh, and then also just I think we were all grateful to be able to drink, drape that crimson jersey on our shoulder pads. I mean, my goodness, what a dream come true to be able to play for the University of Alabama. Right. And well, I'll tell you this, though. I was pissed my freshman year. I wouldn't have my freshman year. <laughs> I would have been, yeah. I was pissed my freshman year. Was a red because, shirt? Right, because I got red shirt, and you weren't going to tell me that I wasn't going to start as a freshman, Yeah. which I still believe I should have started as a freshman had I been given – Fair opportunity, but you know, mm -hmm. back then coaches felt like we yeah. can red shirt people and Wait save them time. for later, right? But Neil put Callaway on way, put them jokers on way away. <laughs> no, no, but Neil, Cal I think Coach Callaway probably hated my, my guts. <laughs> yeah. Did he like anybody? Because, <laughs> well, no, I, I mean, me particularly. Because, <laughs> no, I kid you not, because again, he, he hated were, everybody. No, 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 no. But wait, yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, no, no. I think he had a different level of hatred yeah. for me. He did. Because the moment they redshirted me, I said, y'all going to pay for this all season long. So, you know, when you redshirted, you run scout team. Yeah. Every day I made it a point to go out there and destroy their practices. And they were never able to do anything that they really wanted to do in practice. And that's when, when, when Big Sam was on here. He was talking about that time when I hit him and made him turn half a flip and I knocked him out. That was my freshman year. I made it a point. <laughs> To destroy everything that they tried to do. Heck yeah. And what and then what happened? I was ended up transferring and I started the next year because he seen the writing on the mm -hmm. wall. Because it's like there was no way in hell you were gonna tell me I shouldn't have started as a freshman. So I had a lot of anger my yeah. freshman year. I could see and I was I was thinking you were gonna say that you had anger because they didn't send you to the best doctor in the world 45. Well, minutes that's a whole different yeah, level no. of yeah. anger. <laughs> right. right, that too. Yeah, yeah, and that's what okay. yeah. Got a question from the audience from Eric. Uh, Wes, what, what year did you graduate from Coleman? Uh, 2000. So 2000 okay. was uh, my last year with the Coleman Bearcats. That's what's up. Bearcats. Yeah, <laughs> that Bearcat. You, hey, you don't want to get a hold of the Bearcat in the middle of the night. I hey, hey, listen. When I was in high school, when I was in high school, I ran, I was on the track team. I just did a mm -hmm. shot putting discus. And we were actually in Austin Decatur. It had to have been about 94. Six, I think, and it snowed while we were there, and our bus ended up getting stuck, and we ended up spending the night sleeping in Coleman's City Hall. <laughs> in the Coleman City Hall. I never knew that. <laughs> yes. Wow. We they brought all these cots out. We literally spent the night in Coleman City Hall because our oh, bus was stuck right. on the side of the road from the snow and ice. Yep. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Wait, uh, Man. Why? Why did they have cots in the City Hall? <laughs> I, I don't know, but we would thank that they had. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, a lot of people don't know that story. We ended up sleeping in Coleman City Hall. Yep. Yeah. Wow. I had no know, idea. Do you know the car is the most uncomfortable thing to sleep on? No, nah, the yeah. most uncomfortable thing is looking at those curtains you got behind you. And my God, who who'd you get those? <laughs> from? Is that is that Very Martha Stewart? Yeah. Hey, is that Martha? That's Martha Stewart's first edition, huh? <laughs> hey, you know what? 1975 catalog. Hey. <laughs> We make it do what it do, man. Hey, man, did those things come with an old Cadillac? My God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, my pop driving it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, switching gears a little bit, uh, we had pro days recently, and the combine is uh, quickly approaching. But Wes, what were those two experiences like for you? So, so I actually broke – so I broke my tibia and fibula uh, – and I guess Tennessee, my junior year, we had that. And then in, uh, a few people know I broke my, uh, I broke my other leg during the senior bowl. And oh, so man. I was rehabbing that. Uh, and it was awful. Uh, so I was going through pro day. I was going through pro day and then the combine, I was there, but couldn't run. So I was trying to do bench press, we did bench press one leg. And then the worst part was, so you go do physicals with every, with all 32 teams, right? Yeah. So all 32 teams yanking on my leg, making sure it's healing. And by the end of the day, I swear to you, they we broke my leg. I mean, it was, it was, you know, and and just the time zone changes, and that is a, in the interviews, everybody asking you the same question, saying, "Hey, tell me what makes you. Give me one word to define you as offense." Well, I was like, "Man, I, I just want to play football." <laughs> you know, but. <laughs> And tell me, tell me your type of game is like. Hey, I, I do. I try to do what I'm told, <laughs> but <laughs> but you know, one and you you know, and be and it's a uh, it, it's a stressful experience because your job's in line. You don't know where you're going to live. I mean, it's a you. I was talking to my son about it, and uh, and he said, "Wait, so they just." tell you what city in what state you have to live in you don't even have a choice of where you live and where you work that like what kind of job it does that you know when you take when you step <laughs> away and look at the job world crazy. right it is it is and so but it was it was a really neat experience from one perspective to be able to be there and to be with that group of that caliber and be selected was a huge honor uh, but it, but it's, uh, it, it was a lot, but I was very fortunate, very blessed to be there. Uh, and that, the neatest thing about it is being, is the camaraderie. You start to build the relationships and start to build with people and get to know some of the people that you've read about and heard about over All the right, years. Quick question. So do you still talk to Tom? And if you do, can I get his number? I don't I need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, you want some wedding advice? Yeah. No, not <laughs> you know, you know their wedding planner. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I, I don't think I could pay for an hour of their wedding planner's time. <laughs> right. But what, what about that? Thirty-five years old and and in switching teams and, and doing nothing but win the Super Bowl. It's unbelievable. The way he can get people to elevate their game, you know, is is what separates him. From, from the other great quarterbacks. There's a lot of folks, not a lot, there's a handful of folks who are really great at playing quarterback. But there's few people that can get everybody around them to elevate their game. And that Super Bowl was won by Tampa Bay's defense. Tampa Bay's defense played to a different level than they realized they were capable of playing because you have leaders on that team like Tom Brady that make it a team. Well, I got to witness the Tom Brady greatness firsthand, close up, up and personal. Yeah, yeah. you did. 99 Orange Bowl. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that, Ill. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm still salty, hey. too. Nah. And now they're talking about, does Julian Edelman deserve the Hall of Fame? And so he got released for failing a physical? That's what they said. Yes, they're point. saying, yeah. And, and and so, you know, and that's, that's you know, I love the I love it I love the sport love the NFL but how can you get fired from your job for getting hurt on the job? You know, but the thing about it though <laughs> doesn't happen anywhere. Anybody else. who plays football for an extended period of time can fail a physical because they can yeah. pick nitpick any little thing. Right. It, so to say you're gonna cut him because he failed a physical, 
I mean, anybody who played for more than 10 years total between high school and college and NFL can mm-hmm. feel a physical. Yeah. If, if that's something you can find wrong with them. Yeah. Well, yeah. Speaking of, speaking of the nitpicking and the nitpicking aspect of pro days and the combine and whatnot, what's, what uh, advice do you give these guys who are coming up and about to go, go through all of that on how to deal with the, that, that pressure and the constant uh, picking and prodding? You know, uh, one, know who you are. Know who you are as a person and develop your relationship and, and your faith with God. Because uh, I think you got to have a rock to lean on because things change so fast and there's so many highs and lows and you need that consistency. You know, have your core group of friends that you lean on and your faith that it doesn't change regardless of whether you're whether, whether you get cut because you're defined. You're defined by so many people about how good you are on the football field. And that change that can change in an instance, whether it's injury or whether it's you getting cut or not fitting in with the system. And uh, one, just, you know, knowing who you are and being proud of who you are when you look in the mirror, regardless of football. And then well, they're being patient. Go ahead. Well, you, you know, when, it's funny you say look in the mirror. So did you when you're 40 and nothing but compression shorts and no shirt? Oh, I didn't wear shorts <laughs> at all. <laughs> You know, it's, it's always funny to me though he when you see these linemen. No, when you see these linemen go out there and they let the belly out, they let it yeah. all out. Like oh, I'm here. I was like, oh god, come on. Yeah, and that would you, be my second take... advice. I'm glad you said that. Don't wear compression shorts if you're over 275 pounds. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> listen, hey, listen. And... If you're if you're an offensive lineman, or even you know. Taking your shirt off is not yeah. going to increase your no. speed. <laughs> that yeah. five flat 40 is still going to be a five flat shirt yep. and all. <laughs> yep. Yep. And then I think also like being patient and get, when you get up there and realize that they don't care who you are, you're, you're going to be treated like cattle when you're there. And so I think that's one of the things that they, they got Reuben Foster because it's such an Asian, a, a, a Good terrible point. experience. Good point. That you have to be patient when you're waiting for 10 hours to get your 15th x ray on the same bone that somebody else x-rayed, else x rays, but it wasn't the Philadelphia's doctors who did the x ray. Uh, be patient, know that that's going to happen, know that it's not going to be easy, and don't fly off the hinges because it's a mental they're evaluating you mentally. It's a, everything's a mental test, so be prepared for that. But it's the, the mental aspect is the is the thing that 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 I would focus on rather than the physical is you're going to you're going to do what you do once you well, get I there. Hope, I hope you don't get married no time. We'll really see him fly off the handle. Yeah, right. <laughs> so what, what was your most awkward experience going through all that? <laughs> My most awkward experience. Uh, at there, so it, it would have to be. It would have to be like having Doctor Andrews there, who is the best doctor in the world, mm-hmm. would be most renowned, and he's there with, with the Redskins and then other doctors, other doctors wanting to feel my leg, feel my bone that was healing. And while Doctor Andrews is saying, "Listen, his bone's healing is fine," and and them basically telling them they don't believe him that they want to do it themselves. And uh, and that did not make me happy when they're starting to yank on me and wanting me to hop on my broken leg. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think I lost my patience a little bit at that about that point. Uh, uh, so, you know, I don't know if that's an awkward experience or not, but that's one that sticks that's, out. Uh, for you're sure. about to have a, a Reuben Foster experience, sound like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, right? <laughs> you know, a lot of people, a lot of people will never understand what those physicals are like. I didn't go through pro day because, you know, I was hurt at the time, but I played arena football for some years and the dolphin scene, I was healthy finally. So they bring me in as a free agent. That's physical. Oh my God. I think I was in there for about five hours taking mm-hmm. that physical. I was wow. like, do I, do I even really want to still play football after this? It right. Literally, it, it was about a five-hour process. Yeah, and Just so like, yeah, a- you're right. Is so the on that's a great point, Marvin. So on yeah. the, the on the field stuff's easy. You you know you mm-hmm. know we know how to do that. Once you get out there and run or or do drills, do, do whatever the L drill, whatever it may be, bench press, you can do that. It's the it's the 
it's the physical side. It's the interview process mm-hmm. where they're just it's them making the Giants having a 500 question test that nothing makes sense. And, you know, and, and I work for a corporation now. We do the mental test now all the time, too. But it's but they nobody ever uses them. Giants didn't use them. The company I work for now doesn't use them. Every, you know, they use them. They make you do it and put it in a drawer. So why do them in the first place? It's uh, right. Uh, they, it's uh, you know, it's the the uh, that that can be that part can be frustrating, but uh, but they're uh, unnecessary. I mean, because I mean, even after all that, I go out at two hundred and fifty eight pounds and still run a four six forty. So clearly, there's nothing wrong with my knee at this point. Like, right? <laughs> no, I'm I mean, I'm, 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 right. I mean, I mean, the, I mean, the way y'all talking, I'm asking, were they checking prostates too? Like, were they doing that also? <laughs> oh, they're checking everything. Man. They're checking everything. Yeah. Man. <laughs> hey, uh, it's just, it's, uh, I you... mean, it is in depth. Yeah. That that physical. Oh, my God. I've never been through anything like that in my life. Mm-hmm. And it's basically just a line of people basically essentially standing there with no clothes on at all. And it's like, turn your head and cough. I mean, it's nuts. Wow. <laughs> well, before we move on to uh, Stephen's uh, segment, um, how did playing in Alabama and you know, your experiences there pre- prepare you for the next level? So, when, uh, I think uh, my experiences at Alabama when you when when you first when you when I, when you first asked that question, mm. uh, how did how did it prepare me for the next level playing in Alabama? I think it prepared me for life. Uh, playing, playing at the University of the relationships that I made and playing for the greatest program with the, the greatest fans on earth, uh, you know, the teamwork, how to overcome adversity, leadership, uh, lessons, so many transferable skills that I was able to put in my toolbox and really start to load my toolbox for life. Uh, you know, I, I, you play against great players, you play football, and you do that in the NFL too. Uh, but, but I think playing at Alabama prepared me for life, which is more important in my book than, uh, than the NFL. Uh, cause, cause even if you're Tom Brady, who people act like he's a thousand years old, let's, let's take a step back. He's only 45. He's still a young man. Right. And it's going to end. Right. So the majority of your life is going to come after that. So that, that's the next level. How are you going to be as a husband, as a father, as a leader, in your church and community. Uh, and I think that's what the, the people that the University of Alabama surrounded me uh, with prepare me for. You have something, Stephen? Man, uh, man, I, I, I'm just sitting here looking at Marvin, man. How you feeling, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> this is the most uh, anxious I've ever seen you, man. <laughs> we, do we need to have a pra- prayer service real quick? I mean, we can do that. This is an outreach. <laughs> nah. No, I'm good. I'm- you good. You good. We'll, we'll talk to you after the show. Uh- <laughs> All right. Well, now it's time for our other favorite segment. You know, I had a great name for it last week through my own lens with Stephen M. Smith, but he didn't like that. So we're going to go back to the original name, and that is the death chart. And what that is, is where our favorite reporter from Touchdown Alabama Magazine, Stephen M. Smith, <laughs> Gives us his latest with a crimson tide. So it looks like his glass is a little fogged up. That means he's excited. So Shut what do you up, have man. for us this week? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Well, 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 just as pumpkin fun as always, um, today's, today's edition of the depth chart, it is the A-Day edition. And though I wanted to strategically – talk about uh king and robinson i'm gonna save him Thank you. because i because i feel like i feel like this a day people are really excited to see the magic that is bryce young like is this magic for real uh they're tired of just hearing about it they're tired of just listening to folks talk about it you know i myself of course you guys also want to have your eyeballs on it like is this dude everything that people have talked him up and written him up to be. He came out of high school, 
number one quarterback across all metrics, all recruiting boards, all sides, you know, regardless of, you know, whatever that network was. I probably has, if, 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 I, if I have to say this, prior to Bryce Young, uh, Brody Crow had a heck of an arm. And I don't think people give Brody enough credit for the arm that he had. And, and a lot of times I feel mm-hmm. like, you know, if Brody never gotten hurt, what could have really become for Brody? That's but, true. And Brody didn't have the weapons that they have now either. Though. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So in, in the same way we talk about if Antoine Prothrow, if Tyrone Prothrow, excuse me, didn't get hurt, we would have became mm-hmm. a Prothrow, the same thing for Brody, Brody Crow also. So when I look at Bryce, he's got that ability, but now people want to see, okay, when I get on this field, I want to see this because I, I've talked about this before. In every recruiting class that Nick Saban's had, there's always that one kid that the fans go turn the TV off, shut it off. Like, I, this is the kid I wanted. Pull the Hennessy up, pull the Great Goose up, pull it all up. This was the kid I wanted from the jump. Shut the TV off. Go back to 2008, right? That guy was Julio Jones. You were happy to get everybody else. But when Julio signed, it was like, "Mama, Julio signed. Get the car, get the concrete. Julio signed." In 2017, the guy was Tua. When Tua signed, oh shucks, Tua signed. We in here now. We in here now. Tua in here. So it's the same thing with Bryce Young. You were happy to have the other guys that signed, but when Bryce signed, a lot of fans were like, "We finna conquer the world. We got Bryce Young in here." So that's the so the idea for the fans is you know on Saturday when number nine gets inside Bryant Denny and after the fans they take their pictures with Big Tusca and they go mm-hmm. inside to watch Bryce the idea is going to be um, is this magic real can we finally say that we've seen the magic that's going to get us really pumped up for the upcoming fall. You all right, man? I thought you needed an inhaler for a minute, though. Man, I'm good, man. I just want to live, man. I'm straight. I'm good. But, but yeah, but I, I, feel, I feel like that's the main thing. Uh, and, of course, you want to see how all the quarterbacks do, absolutely. You want to see how Paul Tyson does mm-hmm. because it's the first time that we're actually going to see Paul in a game-like setting. Uh, you want to see how Jalen Milrow does. As the true freshman from Texas, because he's a different type of quarterback, uh, had, had a really good second scrimmage, got out there, was able to throw the ball a bit better, run the ball a bit more. But I go back to something that Wesley mentioned here, and this is huge for the depth chart, is how does this offensive line shake out? Mm. I think that's the biggest question of all, because you got some guys that were banged up from the second scrimmage. You know, Evan Neal had to leave because of a small injury. Uh, Javion Cohen had a bone spur, so he had to be, you know, he had to leave the scrimmage. Um, I, I mean, Ekior is not going to play because he had, you know, a sports hernia uh, uh, to start spring ball, so he's not going to play. Uh, Pierce Quick has a small little back issue. He had to have surgery, so he's not going to play. So you're already down some, uh, some depth right there. So when that depth comes back in the fall, the left side of your offensive line is going to be solved because your left side is going to be Evan Neal, Ekior, and Chris Owens. The right side, that's going to be where the fun happens because on the right side, Tommy Brown is right now holding that right guard spot, but can he keep it? Because when Pierce Quick comes back, that's going to be a fight because Pierce Quick is Landon Dickerson's son. <laughs> so when mm. Pierce Quick comes back, that's going to be a fight right there. And then at right tackle, you got a five-man Russian roulette battle going here between JV on Cohan, Kendall Randolph, Damian George, J.C. Latham, and Tommy Brackemeyer. Now, to me, if J.C. Latham's mentally ready, he's the starter. But if he still shows that he's not quite there, then you would have to go with the experience of Kendall Randolph. Me personally, though, you're going to have four strong offensive linemen and your fifth guy is going to be your swing man. And by, you know, middle portion of the season, that swing man is going to be good to go. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a great analysis, but I'm salty because 
Uh, listen, man, I'm not enthused about this eight day weekend. Not at all. We know why. I'm not impressed. We, not happy. We know why. <laughs> this is the first eight day I'm going to miss in 10, in 10 years. Of oh, okay, okay, okay. Marvin, 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 Marvin. Steven, you got, a Marvin. you got a question from the audience real quick before we get, get to that. Uh, it's from Stingray. Steven, uh, how big was the sweep this past weekend for Alabama over Texas A&M? That was the first sweep since 2017. Is, is, is he talking about the, 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 the baseball or the softball team? Baseball game. We, we, uh, that beat was huge. Yeah, beat that A&M in their place. That was huge. Now, what people don't realize, Bama's baseball schedule got front, got, uh, got uh, front loaded with some tough games. They were mm-hmm. front loaded with some real tough games, and you got to be patient with Coach Bohan. And he's got the right, he's got the right guys. We've got some great bats. I feel like the pitching is starting to kind of come together a little bit, especially on the front end. Now, now Bama's relievers. Sometimes I'm praying, God, send us some relievers because the starting <laughs> pitch is not bad. But these relievers are working my last nerve, so we got to get some relievers in here. But the starting pitching. Coming together, uh, the bats got some strong bats right now, but our schedule was front loaded with a lot of tough teams. So you, you got to give All Coach right. Bo some time. I'll tell you a funny story about baseball. So when we were in school, you know, we weren't really allowed to work, but during the summers, they would allow us to work. So we were actually working one of the baseball tournaments that they were holding at Sewell Thomas, and we were supposedly the field crew. Supposed to roll up the tarp and everything, but it never rained. So one day we out there messing around. And you know me, I always had dreams of being this outfield superstar. I pick up a ball. Bo I, Jackson. Oh, boy. I, look, I pick up a ball and I throw it as hard as I can trying to throw it at the home plate. It never got any height on it. It went straight <laughs> beeline. And when I tell you, it hit Freddie Millen in the back. <laughs> I mean, all you Freddie, Freddie, he hit the ground. <laughs> He turned around. Yeah. I was just like, my bad, my bad, my bad. My bad. <laughs> when I tell, and I threw that ball as hard as I could, and it hit him in his shoulder blade. Boy, he just dropped. I was like, oh, we might need to run. <laughs> you weren't yeah. yeah, were going to outrun Freddie. I no, wasn't. <laughs> at all. But, uh, he, he, he was severely injured from that ball. <laughs> But tune in um, next week, folks, when the depth chart goes to Keegan Robinson. But yeah. I just want I just really wanted to get my thoughts in there on the QB room, uh, particularly Bryce Young, because I'm telling you, um, when you post these fans about uh Bryce Young, it's like a flock of pit bulls, man. Like if you don't drop this meat right now, I'm gonna take the hand off. That's how they are. Right. Well, well, you know, honestly, I'm looking forward to seeing if he actually lives up to the hype, though. Because we, 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 we've thing, seen though. a lot of high-profile recruits come to Alabama and nothing. Like when, when Wesley, when y'all came in, you came in with Josh Parker, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. What did Josh Parker do after all that hype? Absolutely nothing. So, I mean, but we've seen it time and time again where they get these high-profile kids come in. All it's okay. Time. You have talent. We get that. But having talent isn't enough at times mm-hmm. because not everybody can stand out there in front of 100,000 people and do what they're supposed to do. Right. Everybody can't handle that pressure. So talent right. isn't always going to be enough. You know, you got to have something in here to go with that talent and you got to have something in here to put all three together. Because in high school, talent will separate you from everybody else. In college, you mm-hmm. see talent, that gap in talent, it gets smaller and smaller. That's right. So that talent yeah. will only take you so far. You know, you got to be able to put all three of them together. And, he, uh, and, and, he, and he'll be and he'll be out there, Marvin, with uh, fifty thousand people this weekend. So if you have a crowd of fifty thousand, you got to have the preparation. You, you got to be ready. You know, up. you know, because I know Wesley can tell you he can into this too. Like when we played in Florida in front of eighty five thousand people, you can't hear crap. You can't nothing. hear nothing, man. It's all you, really can't. you know. You 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 got you, you really can't. You playing you in really? meeting in front of a hundred thousand yeah. people, you're all uh, you're having to really communicate by hand signals. And you think about it, you got to make a check or audible, yeah, in mm-hmm. front of a hundred thousand, and you got less than a second, and nobody can hear you. True. So you got to be able to think fast, get it out, communicate. And it's the same thing for quarterbacks playing on the road. Quarterbacks playing on the road, can you get those checks and those audibles out in front of that hundred thousand or ninety thousand? It's not easy. 
Mm-hmm. It's not. And, and then and then the biggest thing is we're about to wrap up here for where Bryce is concerned. Not only are you trying to perform in front of you know 50,000 folks, but you also trying to you know hold off a defense on the opposite side. Will Anderson trying to kill you? Chris Adams <laughs> trying, trying to kill you. Head off. That's you right. guys trying to kill you. So not only are you trying to make yourself look good for them 50,000 folks, but you also ain't trying to see Nick Saban's mic get on hot as you getting <laughs> killed by the defense. <laughs> I, yeah. I do have one quick question before we close things down. In regards to spring training, you know, you were talking about with Anderson killing folks. You know, maybe there's one guy who can definitely help prevent that, and that's senior center uh, Chris Owens, you know, coming in late last year. Uh, in relief of uh, Landon Dickerson, he really came into his own and he balled out, in my opinion. What does this spring mean to him? And what are your initial thoughts about his development and what he's going to do for next year? Wes, I'll start with you. And then, Stephen, you can follow up with that. Man, you don't want my opinion? Fine. Well, I do want your opinion, but you look stressed right now for this wedding, yeah. so I didn't want to overload you. And I think. <laughs> don't even- like you said, Chris Chris stepped in with a with some high expectations in a in a on a big stage and he showed out. He did a good job and on the biggest stage that you could you could put in front of him. He did a great job and I think he'll continue and from everything I've heard, he's continued to build off that during the off season and during this spring camp. And uh, I look forward to him just really being that quarterback of the offensive line. Uh, growing his leadership capacity there, and then moving folks off the line. And I keep going back to that. I think, I think, especially at a center, uh, the pass pro, you're always going to have help. Uh, you're pretty much always going to have somebody helping. You're not going to be on an island many times. But when it comes to run to to running the ball, uh, he's got to get off the ball, get under get under folks. And I want to see him uh, putting some people on the helmet. I'm very I'm very proud of CL because. You know, this is this is coming to his fifth, you know, his fifth, sixth year, or his sixth year. It's coming to his mm-hmm. sixth year because he came in 2016. He and Jalen Hurts, you know, both came together. And CO has played a ton of football. I don't think people realize this dude has played center, guard, tackle, and tight end. He's played he's played all over that uh, mm-hmm. that offensive line. So he he is highly experienced. And, and you know, like Wesley mentioned, you know, I saw him. Uh, you know, when he came in to replace Landon Dickerson, when, when Dickerson got cheap shot it there in the Florida game, the entire bench cleared. I mean, even Ben Davis got up and went out there. I, I, I was crazy seeing Ben Davis go out there. He went out there on the, on the, uh, on the <laughs> field. So, uh, you know, but and that was the only time where Ben Davis actually did something was when Dickerson got <laughs> cheap shot and he tried to go on the field and fight somebody. But that's besides the point. The point is Chris Owens – uh, captain of the offensive line, absolutely. Now, I feel like he doesn't. I feel like he doesn't have, I guess, the uh, mentality to be that dirty, dirty guy that Landon Dickerson had, because Dickerson just had that type of mentality. Hey, we but, don't play dirty at Alabama. Not in that way. I'm talking the toughness, the physicality, where not you are not going to get. Up, you, I feel you. Not, I feel you. See. you you're not you were not gonna get over on Landon. Like Landon right. was that dude, you were not gonna get over help on him. But I thought with Chris, Chris has the preparation. I feel like Chris has the mindset where it makes up for it. And I feel like he'll be able to coach everybody else around him and then pull on his own experience. So I think Chris will be fine. That's great stuff, man. I appreciate y'all answering that. Marvin, what are your thoughts on Chris? Yeah, as long as he keep the, the quarterback up right, I'm happy. I, like, I mean, period. <laughs> period, you though. <laughs> and that's why you were asked in the first place, Mark. <laughs> exactly. I got I caught hell, and that's all I got. Well, I guess if he does good. Yeah, if he does his job. Keep the quarterback up right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, man. <laughs> keep, it, well, keep his jersey man. clean. As long as you're doing that, man. we're good. Uh, <laughs> Apparently, Eric Ross has one more question for me. All right, we got. Let's see what we got here, Mr. Eric Ross. <clears throat> All right, Stephen A. Oh, he called you Stephen A. <laughs> now this was I more like popular. His paycheck one time. Yeah, yeah right. you might. We're getting there, <clears throat> Stephen. What do you think about Alabama basketball team this year? And, and do you think they will be a Final Four team next year? 
All right. Okay. So, for, but my thought on this, I thought the team had a good run this year. If we would have made more free throws, it would have been a Final Four run and potentially a national championship blast. run. But I'll say this, though. I'll say this. I feel like this experience will prepare it to be a Final Four team next year yep. because you got a lot of your core guys back. Josh Primo's back. Uh, Keon Ellis, Javon Quinterly, Jaden Shackelford, Juwan Gary, you know, all of those guys come back along with some new guys. So the hurt that they felt watching UCLA wrongfully celebrate, that hurt will be there and that hurt will let them know we ain't going to let this mess happen again. So I feel like that group will be fired up from that, you know, experience and it will transition into them, them becoming a Final Four team next season. My main well, thing is, if I'm Coach Petway and if I'm Nate Oates, these boys better be shooting a thousand free throws after every practice. But you know, <laughs> adversity actually goes a long way in making good teams great. You yeah. know, because in '98 we had a good team; we were decent. You know, we went seven and five, which we should have been a lot better than seven and five. But that's neither here nor there. But we went to the Music City Bowl. And it snowed before we got there. It snowed in the ice while we were there. It iced while we were playing Virginia Tech. Darius Gilbert set himself on fire, trying to what? get in one of the jet heaters. You know those jet heaters on the sideline? Yeah. He has the coat on. Darius set himself on fire. fire on the sideline. Love that story. We get beat to sleep like 40-something to 70. <laughs> we, made up, yeah. we made up our mind right then. We were not coming back to Nashville next year. And that was Michael Vick now. Well, no. no, Vic didn't even no, play. No, that was, that was, was before, the, the year uh, before. No, Vic, team, Vic was a freshman because we came out the same year. Vic was on the team, but he wasn't the quarterback. That's when they had that guy, uh, Corey Moore, uh, playing defensive end. He was out there it wrecking. Was, uh, out man. But Bruh. we made up our minds after that trip to Nashville, being in the snow and the ice and in the cold, that we weren't doing that again. Bruh, and so you know, and the next year – and the next year we win Miami, baby. He's hurt. Hey, <laughs> bro, said he set himself on fire. <laughs> no, like real life, he set Darius himself Gilbert. on fire. Oh man! Yes, that because yeah. we're all crowded around the heat. First of all, we all look like league players out there because we got on hoodies and full sweatsuits under our pants. You know how we see people and it's all bunched up under their pants and under yeah. their jerseys because we had on full hoodies and everything. Everything that was in those lockers got put on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Uh, Darius didn't mention this story when he was on here a couple weeks ago. We definitely need to oh, revisit that. Oh, No, we need to have him set, back. Set himself on fire on the sideline. We all like, we smell it. Like, man, what's that burning? Oh, <laughs> you're on fire, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, do you I, not know that you is on fire? <laughs> the man. funny thing about it is, Virginia Tech's out there. They have on no shirts under their shoulder pads. No nothing. They just got on shoulder pads and jerseys. Then they got tucked with their stomachs out. Because it was like six degrees and it iced the entire game. We like, man, we just want to go home. <laughs> they out there running around screaming, having the time of their life. Like, listen, man, where we from, we don't get this kind of weather. So, you know, we just here. Right. Because they say we got to be here. But we ready to go. <laughs> uh, on that oh, note. We on that note, let's move into our closing segment. Uh, before I talk to Marvin about his book, I want to remind everybody to go to our uh, CTS interview room YouTube page. Uh, watch the special interview this week. The special guest is none other than our own Steve Brown. He could be there for that, but he couldn't be there here tonight. Hey, who, who's the host? Of, who's the host of the special interview room? Who's what's that guy name? Uh. Man, I don't remember. Uh, I think he's holding a, a WWE championship belt at home in the dark. What is it? What? Oh, man, I thought I seen him on an episode of Hoarders or something. I don't know. He's like I, one of those weirdos or something. I, 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 I thought his name started with a J. Is it started with a J? Is it, is it a J there? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I I, I'm going to look him up. <laughs> Shout we out love, to Joseph. <laughs> we, love our, we love our producer, Joseph. <laughs> All right, Mark. <laughs> As always, each week we like to uh, touch on your book, how it's doing, the lives it's changing, how we can get our hands on it, man. Give us the update on your book. Oh, man. 
You can go to 40 plus strong.com, 40 P L U S S T R O N G dot com. The book is doing what the book does as usual. You know, it was actually good. I actually got to see Al Holly, one of our former teammates. Oh. He he posted his transition pictures, and to see Al go from where he was at where he's at now, he's he looks like he's probably dropped close to 125 pounds if I had to take a guess. Yeah. So seeing that progress, man, Al has done an amazing job. Seeing Fernando Bryant's progress, you know, 2'5 didn't look like 2'5 no more. 2'5 had a belly. He didn't look like a DB. But, you know, seeing him back to his old self, man, and, and seeing so many guys just take take it and just change their lives with it, man. It, it's, it's moving when you think about the fact that you wrote something that truly impacts people on a day-to-day -day basis and you're truly changing their lives with it. Man, that, that's an absolute blessing. I love when you get a chance to share that with us each week. And, folks, you need to follow him on Instagram uh, and see exactly what he's talking about. You need to bring this in your life because this is this is really, like you said, it's changing lives and saving lives. So it's, it's a big deal. Exactly. All right. Uh, uh, Marvin, matter of fact, how can folks uh, contact you on social media so they can see what you're doing? Uh, Instagram is the most efficient way to do it because uh, very rarely I have my own Facebook. Book. I'm trying to do better with Facebook, but Instagram, uh, Constant45, just like the jersey. Last name Constant, number 45. On Twitter, Constant45, just put a one on it. Uh, Facebook, I'm Marvin Constant, but yeah, shoot me a message, follow me. I'm always down to help, man. I'm, I'm, I'm always down to help. So That's what's up. All right, Mr. Stephen M. Smith, how, how can folks reach you on social media? What's up next for you on In My Own Words? And yeah, take off from there. Absolutely, absolutely, guys. Well, the people can follow me on Twitter. It's, it's at Coaching M. Smith on Twitter, at Coaching M. Smith, when I'm not doing stuff at Touchdown Alabama Magazine or on the Bama Standard. I got, you know, I'm, I'm helping out these kids back home in the hometown. So hopefully we can have a football season this year so I can go back out there being with uh, my guys. That's Coaching M. Smith on Twitter, on Facebook. It is Stephen M. Smith and the show, in my own words, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Central Time, where we are talking Alabama football. And uh, tomorrow, i got a couple of former players coming on because we're, we're going to talk about, you know, at what, at what moment did these particular players recognize that their starting quarterback had what it took to be the starting quarterback as we get, you know, revved up for this A-Day. Do we get any kind of hint there? Is this something we have to wait and see? Well, I, well, I mean, th these were two, you know, walk-ons that were wide receivers. Not, not, not big. Okay. These were two like walk-ons. Hey, anybody who plays at Alabama they, is big, right? Yeah, I heard. I heard they canceled it. They said so they're gonna move it back to the twenty-fourth. Man, don't don't do that, Mark. man. Don't do it. Don't do that. Don't, don't do man. that. And last time but... in ten years that I will beat her. <laughs> and Marvin, just write you a letter to Greg Byrne, man. <laughs> you can make it make it happen, man. <laughs> and last but not least, our guest of honor, uh, Wes, tell us how we can contact you on social media. What's up next for you and all that good stuff? At Bounty Paper Towels One. Bounty <laughs> <laughs> <Johnny>, baby. <laughs> What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Justin, what? Thank, 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 thank you guys for having me. It's always an honor, uh, Marvin. I appreciate your friendship for over twenty years now. We're getting old, bro. Oh, I, I do. I appreciate. I, I appreciate you, man. Old. I appreciate yeah. as well, brother. Yeah, I do. I do, and it's always uh, it's always great to be here with you. Talk a little football and talk Alabama football. What else is better? Uh, Nothing. And, I'm on uh, – uh, you, can, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Wesley Brett. Uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting better at that. Uh, you know, I'd like, like uh, to, to go back I to said, I'm getting old. I don't need paper but, towel one. What the yeah. – <laughs> <laughs> You know the, the lumberjack on the body paper towels, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you clarified that. I got it, but some, some others may not. <laughs> <laughs> well uh man thank you Wes for coming on absolute honor to have you on man uh we enjoyed it we appreciate you coming on our new platform especially the week of the a-day game man couldn't be happier to have you on. bring that up 
We know it's I'm sorry, man. I'm the sorry. Week, I came home because of the week of Marvin's wedding. Oh, that's, that's, that's what we're saying. <laughs> 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 hey, you, you hey. camera crews, can I do hey. can I do play by play? Do you have do you have color? A color analyst? Yeah. Hold on, but look, I'll tell you though. So, so you know we normally play LSU that second Saturday in November, right? So our original wedding date was November the first. I made sure I scheduled our wedding on an off date, and then COVID comes and screws up my whole plan. And now I gotta miss Hey, 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 Marvin. So here we go. All, all I like to do is can I just light one candle? That's it. Can I just light <laughs> one candle? <laughs> hey man, do you know how hard I worked to make sure that that thing was on Alabama's off week to only have my plan? Look, 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 I understand that, Marvin. Believe you, believe me, believe me, believe me. I do. I just want to light one candle. That's it. No. One candle. Hey, hey, what they say, ball is life, baby. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> well, that's our show for tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate you tuning in. Uh, tune in next week where we ha- will have even more fun and maybe Steve Brown show up. We'll see. <laughs> and uh, <Yeah. laughs> and we won't talk about that supposed event that's going on this weekend that's not Marvin's wedding at all. <laughs> Girl, I just yeah. one candle. All right. Again, thank you, Wes. I uh, had a great time thank as you. always. Roll Tide, fellas. Thank you, brother. Roll Tide. Roll Tide.